Hello friends, uh, this is Dr. Nirmali Chaudhary. I am a senior consultant in internal medicine at Woodlands Hospital, Calcutta, India. I used to practice in the United States for many years before I moved back to India uh, in the recent past. Uh, I want to make a very comprehensive but not too long uh, video about uh, the ongoing coronavirus epidemic. Uh, as we know, coronavirus is not new. Coronavirus or a family of viruses, uh, they have been around for millions of years. Um, coronaviruses give you diseases like common cold and cough. Uh, different species have different coronaviruses. Sometimes coronavirus of one species transmits to another species. For instance, the current COVID-19 most likely came from bats. Uh, in the past, in 2003, we had a SARS epidemic. Uh, then in 2011, I think, we had a MARS epidemic. Uh, which is a Mediterranean uh, respiratory syndrome virus. Uh, SARS and MERS, uh, both are coronaviruses, just like uh, COVID-19. Uh, it is believed MERS came from camels. Uh, it is really very difficult to say when such things can happen. Uh, most likely it's uh, interaction of other species, zoonotic species, uh, other animals uh, with uh, human beings when uh, coronavirus or uh, other respiratory viruses like flu virus uh, that belongs to that species transmits over uh, and uh, creates a disease in humans. As a similar thing happened uh, back in the time of the Spanish flu about 100 years back and uh, that time it came from uh, pigs and that was a modified uh, or rather a mutant influenza virus. Uh, so it is really very very vital to understand uh, the main problem with the current COVID-19 disease. Uh, the main problem is this, that a lot of people will not and does not have any symptom, but they can transmit the virus to others. If you take about 100 people who catches this virus, so out of 100 people who catch the COVID-19 virus, uh, about 80% will be having very mild disease. Uh, about 15, 14 to 15 percent will have a severe disease uh, that requires hospitalization. Uh, and about 5 percent people will have critical disease that will need intensive care management. This may involve a uh, ventilator or not. What is important to understand is that the problem is not with the sick people. The problem is with the people who don't have symptoms or have very mild symptoms that they ignore or they don't even understand themselves. So these are the people who is transmitting and who will transmit the disease unless we continue social distancing and uh, probably you know a nationwide lockdown for some time more regarding uh, the lockdown uh, we need to understand this is the best option that we have in hand but this is not necessarily a comprehensive solution unless we have a vaccine which is very unlikely to come uh, within even a year. Uh, unless we have a vaccine and we vaccinate um, almost the entire nation, uh, there is no way we can be sure that we're not going to have this problem 
uh, you know, uh, either continue at a subliminal level for many, many years or even have another massive outbreak uh, even after it subsides after a few months. Uh, no, no reason to believe that this cannot come back again after a few months or maybe a year. Uh, regarding testing, I think this is the area which uh, we need, really need to understand, including our decision makers. There are two kinds of testing we are talking about. If you have the infection, if you are currently carrying the virus, you may be having symptoms or you may not be having symptoms. We can detect the virus with a test called real-time PCR. That is real-time reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. That's a mouthful, but just uh, in, a, uh, in short, we are detecting the viral uh, you know, genetic material and thereby uh, you know, detecting the infection, whether it is present in someone or not. Now, the problem with this test is that it is highly dependent on the technique, especially the sample. It has been shown that uh, when you do uh, RT-PCR, instead of nasal swab, if you take sputum sample, it is uh, much more sensitive. The problem with the reverse transcriptors PCR, real-time PCR in this uh, case is that about 30% uh, patients will have false negative. That is, you may have the infection, but the result comes negative. But that's a big problem, a big problem for the government, big problem for hospitals. So we need to repeat the test at least once, maybe after 48 hours and see whether the negative is really negative. So that is one part of the story. Now the other uh, problem is with testing antibodies. Usually the primary test, that's the RT-PCR, will be positive uh, once you catch the infection. We take samples from your nasal swab or from uh, a sputum sample and then we run the test as I mentioned earlier. Uh, other test is antibody detection in someone. If you have an infection, your body mounts an immune response and you develop antibodies, we can check for those antibodies. Those tests are uh, being developed and is available uh, in certain countries. Uh, we do have antibody development in the system in about five to seven days of catching the infection. Uh, Detecting people barely on the basis of antibodies is not a good idea because uh, at least five days would have passed um, before he has the antibody. And uh, in those five days, he or she could have uh, transmitted the virus to a lot of other people. Remember, this kind of viral transmission is in geometric progression, is an exponential progression. So one person can uh, infect, you know, thousands of people in a matter of a day or two. So now coming to the testing, I hear a lot, especially on the media, that whether we are having adequate testing or not. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very you know, tricky question. Because if you say uh, you test, say, 100 people or maybe 10,000 people, but if you get the test negative on someone today, and even if he does not have the infection today, there is no reason to believe that he cannot have it tomorrow. If he comes in contact with someone who has uh, the infection, um, he may catch it tomorrow. So there is no good definition of what is adequate amount of testing. At more and more testing will help us understand how many people in realistic terms have already caught it and uh, we can isolate them, put them in quarantine. But uh, in reality, uh, there is no reason to believe the people who have tests coming negative, they cannot catch the infection later on. 
and also regarding lockdown, there is no uh, hard and fast rule about uh, how long of a lockdown, uh, a nationwide lockdown of 1.3 billion people. Uh, how long can we really do this and how long is going to be long enough? There is no, no reason to believe that uh, one month is good enough. Uh, someone may say three months, someone may say four months. There is no, absolutely no medical or epidemiological data to say that this length of time is foolproof, is 100% that you will be completely safe after this. There are some models, there are some you know, data-driven uh, models uh, even based on previous viral epidemics, uh, pandemics, we uh, can take a guess that, you know, how many days of lockdown will have a significant impact. And I think, you know, uh, we are already in the third week of lockdown in India. We are already having a, a huge benefit. There is no question about it. If there was no lockdown by now, we probably would have a million patients. No, we might not know that because we wouldn't have done a million tests. But quite likely, um, more than a million people would have caught this infection by now if you didn't have lockdown. But once you remove the lockdown, uh, it can just go back to square one. So there is no good solution to this problem. No one knows how long of a lockdown is long enough. And as I told you earlier, the main problem is with the people who have no symptoms but may be a carrier. They may be transmitting the virus to a lot of other people but they don't know. They have no symptoms whatsoever. So who are you going to test? If you test only people who have any foreign contact, if you test only people who are symptomatic, who are coughing, short of breath, having runny nose, having um, some kind of illness, feeling extremely weak, running a fever. If you, we restrict the tests to only those people who are symptomatic, that doesn't serve the purpose. So think about it practically. To really understand how many people in any given point of time has this infection, we need to test everyone 1.3 billion people in India. So you do 1.3 billion tests the same day. Then you have 30% negative rate. So you check again after maybe at least two to three days and recheck again after two to three days. This is just not practically possible. So there will be a lot of people who will not know that they have this infection. There will be a lot of people who will get sick even after the lockdown is lifted. They will catch the infection or they already have the infection that they will uh, show symptoms later and get sick later. The incubation period that is after catching the infection till your body sort of takes care of it uh, is about 14 days. Now there is some data from Singapore, which suggests that this may be even longer, maybe up to 24 days. Regarding having a lifelong immunity, like if you catch the infection and you develop antibodies to the infection, you get better. It usually takes about two weeks to get better from this infection. But even if you develop antibodies to this infection detectable in your blood, we don't know if this gives you a lifelong immunity or maybe a prolonged immunity. There is some evidence, I remember, I think it's from South Korea, where they're suggesting that there are people who had the COVID-19 infection a couple of months back, recovered, completely normal, completely asymptomatic, but now they have caught the infection again from someone else. So regarding this infection, we don't know a lot of things. 
imagining that lockdown is going to fix everything, that's wrong. Imagining that if we do enough testing, that will be solution to the problem, that's wrong. There are a lot of ifs and buts with the testing. What kind of test, how well you are doing it, how often you are doing it, how many you are doing it. But overall, uh, in a huge country with a vast population with a very high population density like India, uh, it is a very, very difficult problem that we are facing and we will, I repeat, we will continue to face this problem at least for a few months more. Whatever I said here does not apply only to India but it is actually applicable to any nation in the world. It is important to quarantine people with symptoms. It is important that we provide proper testing. It is very important that we provide proper protective equipment to the doctors and nurses and all healthcare professionals who are the soldiers in this battle. And if they get sick, then it is going to be very difficult to fight this battle, which is something we don't know for how long we have to fight. Thank you so much.